Here is the description of the full bridge converter, as the basic of the switching power supply. This is a full bridge DC-DC converter. Full bridge refers to turning on the switch, by pairing two of four switches, MOS FET, crossing diagonally to transfer electric power, from the primary side to the secondary side. The full bridge converter consists of the hard switch type and phase shift type, described later, depending on the timing of the switching control. Efficiency is improved in the phase shift type, using soft switching. We assume the breakdown voltage required for MOS FET, with the full bridge converter, to be as follows. When Q1 and Q4 are turned on, on resistance of MOS FET is low, and as a result, it can be regarded as almost short circuit between the drain and the source, therefore, the voltage of V in is applied between the drain and the source of MOS FET, Q2 and Q3 that are in the off state. When Q2 and Q3 are turned on, V in is also applied to MOS FET Q1 and Q4 that are in the off state. This is a measure of the breakdown voltage required for MOS FET. In fact, a design with sufficient margin is required with surge voltage and D rating taken into consideration. Now, we will explain the voltage applied to the primary side transformer. Voltages of plus V in and minus V in are applied to the primary side of the transformer alternately, by switching the switch. This enables an effect equivalent to that of applying the power supply voltage twice, which allows supporting high power applications. A device with high speed and low on resistance is required as a switching element. We offer MOS FET with the superjunction structure that enables this demand. The traditional double diffusion type structure has reached the limitation of unresistance. The resistance component of the device on resistance consists of channel resistance, JFET resistance, drift resistance, and substrate resistance. It is critical to reduce drift resistance since the drift resistance of the traditional double diffusion structure MOS FET reaches 80% or more of unresistance. Yet, the breakdown voltage of MOS FET depends on the thickness and concentration of the drift layer, and those are in a trade-off relationship. Therefore, it has been difficult to reduce on resistance while maintaining breakdown voltage. The superjunction structure was proposed in order to reduce this drift resistance. While the double diffusion structure has a peak electric field at the boundary of the P-base layer and drift layer, and the depletion layer extends downwards, the superjunction structure has the depletion layer extend sideways from junction of each PN pillar. For this reason, the concentration of the N-type layer can be made higher than that of the double diffusion structure, and low on resistance of superjunction MOS FET can be lower than the conventional trade-off relationship. Let's see how the hard switch type full bridge converter works. This circuit turns on and off alternatively, with pairs of Q1 and Q4, and Q2 and Q3. The timing is divided into four segments. The timing waveform shows that there is the dead time, that is the entire MOS FET turns off. Because an extremely large short circuit current passes, and may damage MOS FET. When Q1 and Q2, or Q3 and Q4 are turned on at the same time. Now, let's explain the operations at the individual timings for the hard switch type full bridge converter. This is a timing from T0 to T1. Q1 and Q4 are turned on. Turning on Q1 and Q4 applies V into the dot end side of the transformer on the primary side positive and transmit power to the secondary side. At same time, the dot side of the transformer on the secondary side becomes positive and the diode D5 turns on by biasing in the forward direction. In addition, the capacitor CO is charged via the choke coil L. This is the timing from T1 to T2. Q1 and Q4 are turned off. Even with Q1 and Q4 turned off, a current through the leakage inductance L1 will continue to flow. 
This freewheel current circulates the accumulated energy from L1 back to L1 via the body diodes of Q2 and Q3. The current continues until the accumulated energy is consumed. On the secondary side, freewheel current through D5 and D6 by energy accumulated in the choke coil L charges CO. At this time, the voltage reversed around the center tap is generated on the secondary side of the transformer. No voltage is apparently generated because of the cancellation, since they are equivalent voltages with reverse phases. Even after the voltage on the primary side becomes zero by consuming energy accumulated in L1, freewheel current through D5 and D6 by energy accumulated in the choke coil L charges CO on the secondary side. This is the timing from T2 to T3. Q2 and Q3 are turned on. When Q2 and Q3 are on, Vin is applied positively to the non-dot end side of transformer, as opposed to the previous timing. Voltage is generated on the secondary side positively, on the non-dot end side as well. Voltage is applied to D6, in the forward direction to charge CO via L. This is the timing from T3 to T4. Q2 and Q3 are turned off. When Q2 and Q3 are turned off, a current through L1 will continue to flow. This current drops to zero after circulating via D1 through D4. Likewise the freewheel current flows by the energy accumulated in L on the secondary side. This current flows evenly through D5 and D6. After the voltage on the primary side drops to zero, Freewheel current through D5 and D6 by the choke coil L charges CO on the secondary side. These are the operations of the hard switch type. It was mentioned at the beginning that the configuration of the full bridge converter circuit is easy to apply to high power and for this purpose high switching frequency is also necessary. Yet a higher frequency may be subject to an issue of increased switching loss. Here, let us mention the switching loss and countermeasures for it. MOS FET does not instantly turn on when a voltage is applied to the gate, so it takes time to reach the steady state. The figure shows a conceptual diagram of turning on and off the MOS FET. As the diagram shows, a switching loss occurs at the transition period, from on to off and vice versa. A higher frequency means an increase of the number of switching per unit time, which means an increase in the switching loss. A loss in MOS FET generates because of the flow of the drain current, ID, under application of the voltage between the drain and the source, VDS. During the switching transition period of MOS FET, that is indicated by surrounding dotted lines in the diagram, the drain current, ID, flows with voltage of VDS applied, causing a loss. Soft switching, that is switching when a current or voltage is zero, is the countermeasure for this issue. A method to switch with zero voltage is called zero voltage switching, ZVS, and that with zero current is zero current switching, ZCS. However, ZVS is more popular in the full bridge type power supply circuit using MOS FET. We explain it along with the behavior of the circuit later. Let's look at how the phase shift type full bridge converter works. While its circuit configuration is identical to that of the hard switch type, the timing to control each MOS FET differs. Timing is divided into eight segments. In addition, a dead time is applied while Q1 and Q2 and Q3 and Q4 are not turned on simultaneously. Every MOS FET is turned off in the hard switch type. Not every MOS FET is turned off in the phase shift type. And the dead time is applied for MOS FETs that are lined up vertically. Now, let's explain individual timings for the phase shift type full bridge converter.
This is the timing from T0 to T1. Q1 and Q4 are turned on. When Q1 and Q4 are turned on, V in is applied positively to the dot end on the primary side transformer. At this time, the dot end of the transformer becomes positive on the secondary side and is turned on by forward biasing the diode D5. In addition, the capacitor CO is charged via the choke coil L. This is the timing from T1 to T2. Q4 is turned off. At the beginning of this period, the voltage between the drain and the source is zero, thus it starts with soft switching. It does not transit to off instantly. The freewheel current caused by the leakage inductance L1 continues to flow even during the transition period, which charges parasitic capacitance C4 of Q4 and discharges C3 of Q3. C4 is kept charged even after Q4 transits to off, and the charge voltage finally reaches voltage equivalent to that of V in. At the same time, C3 is discharged until the voltage between the drain and the source of Q3 reaches zero. Energy accumulated in L1 remains even after completion of C4 charging and C3 discharging, and the freewheel current flows via the body diode D3 of Q3. As long as a current flows in this route, the voltage between the drain and the source of Q3 is fixed to zero. Since voltage at the both ends on the primary side transformer is almost zero, no power is transmitted to the secondary side. On the secondary side, CO is charged with the freewheel current of the choke coil L. This current evenly flows from the center tap of the transformer to the upper and the lower side and turning on D5 and D6 and flows to CO via L. Since the voltages generated in the transformer by the freewheel current have the same magnitude with inverted polarity, they are cancelled out to become apparently zero. This is the timing from T2 to T3. Q3 is turned on. At the start of on, the state with the body diode D3 of Q3 still turned on, so the voltage between the drain and the source is zero. Thus, Q3 is turned on by soft switching that has little switching loss. The freewheel current of L1 on the primary side continues to flow evenly after being turned on. The state remains on the secondary side as well. This is the timing from T3 to T4. Q1 is turned off. The voltage between the drain and the source of Q1 is zero, so that its off state starts with soft switching. Parasitic capacitance C1 of Q1 is charged, and parasitic capacitance C2 of Q2 is discharged, in the same manner as the period between T2 and T3. The freewheel current of L1 on the primary side, and that of L on the secondary side continue to flow. When charging of C1 and discharging of C2 is completed, but the current still flows via the body diode D2 of Q2, since energy is still accumulated in L1. The voltage between the drain and the source of Q2 keeps zero, while this freewheel current flows to D2. The freewheel current of L on the secondary side continues to flow. This is the timing from T4 to T5. Q2 is turned on. At the start of on, the voltage between the drain and the source of Q2 is zero. And during transition from off to on, freewheel current of L1 also continue to flow. So switching is completed with soft switching. The non-dot end of the transformer becomes positive on both the primary and the secondary sides, and D6 on the secondary side is turned on to charge CO via the choke coil L. Electric power is transferred from the primary side to the secondary side at this time. This is the timing from T5 to T6. Q3 is turned off. The energy accumulated in L1 on the primary side generates freewheel current to charge C3 and discharge C4. Energy accumulated in L1 remains even after completion of C3 charging and C4 discharging. And freewheel current flows via the body diode D4 of Q4. On the secondary side, CO is charged with the freewheel current through L. This is the timing from T6 to T7. Q4 is turned on. At the start of on, it starts with soft switching, 
since D4 is turned on, and the voltage between the drain and the source of Q4 becomes zero. The freewheel current of L1 on the primary side, and that of L on the secondary side, continue to flow. This is the timing from T7 to T8. Q2 is turned off. The voltage between the drain and the source is zero, and thus it starts with soft switching. Parasitic capacitance C2 of Q2 is charged, and parasitic capacitance C1 of Q1 is discharged, by the freewheel current of L1. Energy accumulated in L1 still remains, even after the completion of C2 charging and C1 discharging, and it flows via the body diode D1 of Q1. At this time, the voltage between the drain and the source of Q1 is almost zero, to enable soft switching of Q1 at the next timing. As described above, phase shift type realizes soft switching by optimizing timing of on or off from Q1 through Q4. This concludes the explanation of the hard switch type full bridge converter and phase shift type full bridge converter. Thank you for your time.